Hello. So, yeah, first of all, thanks for staying until the very end, the last talk. Really glad to be here and I'm glad that so many people um, want to listen to yeah, our project, Open Web Search. It's not to be, um, it has nothing to do with Open Search, which you see here as the partner. Open Web Search is an independent thing. It's a research project funded by the European Union and its ambition is to create a web index that can be used by European businesses or researchers or any innovators, anyone who has an innovation idea. So first of all, I want to present me and uh, us. With us, I mean the institutions that participate in the Open Web Search project. It's, I think, 16 institutions from academia, mostly, as well as also industry. And some of them participate as data centers and therefore infrastructure providers. I myself are employed in the, at the University of Passa, which is located in Germany as well, at the very uh, southern border. And uh, yeah, Passa is one of the participants. I will later on present what we are doing and what our task within the project is. As I'm furthermore a committer to the, um, o to the open source project Stormcrawler, which we use. And for our project, we are, uh, I'm developing our own crawling system. Furthermore, I want to thank Julian, who I planned this talk together, but he's unfortunately not here today. So nevertheless, I want to take the chance and thank him for his remarks, um, as I will um, yeah, present later on. He's the author of Stormcrawler and URL Frontier. He was here already sometimes, I think, and presented his open source projects that we do now reuse for um, our purposes. So I want to start with the question, and uh, that's yeah, like a very basic question: What kind of, what is the most important access to information that um, me, you use? That answer is definitely different now than it was 30 or uh, 50 years ago. But now, I guess we can all agree: when we want to know something, we look it up on the internet. So. Web search is a really important access to free information. However, um, where do we go in order to search? There are four big tech companies that kind of are dominating the search engine market, and um, they serve kind of as a gatekeeper um, for web search. So why don't we then add another search engine that does not have the kind of, um, yeah, the, the intentions of enterprises that are kind of at least sometimes going against the intentions of the public as they of course are, um, have economic interests. So why don't we just build our own search engine? Of course, yeah, it's not that easy. I borrowed this plot here from, for, from the Geeks for Geeks website in which they um, yeah, describe search engines and define four steps in order to make your own search engine. And I think that is quite helpful because with these four steps, you can easily explain what is the purpose of our project of open web search and why we want to build an open web index. What we would do, would we um, would like to do is, is doing the first two steps for you. So the crawling as well as the indexing. And the open web index is therefore our main product, which can be used by others to build vertical search applications on top of it, as well as use it to build any other data products. I mean, nowadays it's always important to mention because at least in the scientific community, the um, 
amount of data that people want to get access to is larger and larger as you need web data in particular in order to create a lot of AI applications and AI models. So the idea is to not have a web index hosted by one of the four big tech gatekeepers, but have a web index which is created by and for the community, funded by, for now, until now, the European Union. The process and, or pipeline for creating the open web in index starts with crawling, what we are working on. So our work is combining the existing open source crawling projects, which already have pre presented, been presented, um, at Berlin Buzzwords in the previous years and use them to build um, our own crawling system which um, collects web data on a large, large scale. A important point here is that we want to collect fresh web data and not just take the data from common crawl. Maybe you have heard it, heard about it. It's a large repository of web crawls that um, is published every 10 weeks approximately and used in many um, application cases in industry and academia as well. Our ambition is therefore to yeah, continuously crawl the web, in particular the text-based surface web and on top of it we also include some other data sources, as you see here, Wikipedia, um, Mastodon, OpenAlex, and GitLab, in order to yeah, en enrich our crawling and add some more application cases. The biggest challenge in our work so far is that the infrastructure we use is rather heterogeneous and distributed over different data centers, which all participate in one or the other way in our project. So for building the open, uh, the, um, open web crawler, our um, approach on web crawling is kind of, is kind of yeah, makes it kind of difficult due to the heterogeneity of the infrastructure. Um, now I want to say some few words to the project, open source uh, projects that we use. This is first of all the crawler that is authored by Julian. It's already around since about 10 years and it differentiates from other uh, frameworks and projects um, as it is stream-based, in particular in comparison to Apache Nudge that um, uses a batch-based approach. It's stream-based as, yeah, it's based on Apache Storm as the name gives away. And there's also some nice exciting news as it's currently an in incubation at Apache. Stormcrawler goes together with the URL Frontier, which is also a, a project started by Julian. Um, it's rather recent in 2020, and its purpose is to serve as a middle layer between the crawler that fetches and parses the web content, as well as the um, persistent store of URLs that takes care of um, yeah, persisting the crawl status. It contains an API which is implemented by Stormcrawler, of course, as well as other crawlers. And that API is by its definition agnostic of the crawler, the, the concrete crawler software that it connects to. It's implemented in different versions with different underlying databases, like in-memory databases or distributed databases, and we are currently using OpenSurge. So yeah, indeed, we end up at OpenSurge again. And um, yeah, that leads us to the overall architecture of our open web crawler. It's uh, consists of three tiers. The uppermost is the crawler itself, the software that fetches content from the web and parses it. 
the middle layer, as I said, is the part of the software that takes care of managing the URL. It furthermore filters it, schedules it, so it assigns it a date when it will be fetched next, and overall logs and monitors the crawls the crawl state. That is, yeah, in particular, an important point as we, of course, want to create transparency over our crawl activities. So you can go to a public dashboard, which I will um, point you to in a few minutes, where you can find all our crawling activities. And if you see that your website has been crawled and you want to opt out from that, that is also possible via, um, yeah, that way. The bottom tier of its architecture is the distributed URL store, which is currently implemented as with OpenSurge. So we are currently still in the progress of setting up a POC infrastructure for creating and sharing our open web index. And so far, we have collected up to 40 million web pages per day. These web pages, which are mostly text based, so HTML pages, HTML documents, are stored in the work file format, which is an archival format for yeah, storing any crawl activities. This, these work, fi work files will be processed and finally available as index in the CIF file format and um, complemented with metadata as Paquet files. So the CIF files and Paquet files always go together and contain um, all necessary information. CIF is, uh, is the short, is the abbreviation for common index file format and there is also we also have a small script for transforming CIF into a Apache Lucene index for example. So CIF is a file format that it's which whose particular purpose is interoperability among open search uh, open source uh, search engines. Um, yeah, so far so good. Then, last but not least, I want to point towards two resources that uh, you can look up and um, inform yourself a bit deeper. This is, first of all, the dashboard that um, yeah, monitors our crawling activities and also gives you the possibility to get a deeper insight in the data that we have collected, as well as to issue takedown requests. And most importantly, I want to point towards Ovilix, a tool which will allow you to pull and actually work with the open web index. Here you see a short screenshot from the um, dashboard. But yeah, last but not least, I want to, um, yeah, you don't need to remember all the things. Just you will see, uh, get the slides afterwards, of course. Just uh, remember, yeah, remember our main homepage, ows.eu. You will find, of course, all important information there. So then I want to say thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Michel. We have the first question here. Hi, thank you very much for this. Uh, I very much like the kind of European um, initiative like, like this. Um, disclaimer, uh, I work, my previous employer was Quant, the French company trying to build a European uh, search engine. And disclaimer number two, it was quite hard. And my question is, um, how do we manage the 90% of garbage uh, web pages that are yeah. on, on, the, on the World Wide Web. Do you have a crawl score or some tools to avoid uh, your crawler to lose time over this kind of garbage? Because it was a huge problem at, at court. Yeah. I mean, I'm really glad to talk about this topic because it's a big challenge. And 
for our case, I mean, as I am working on, definitely not a solved one, as I think it's such a huge challenge that um, it can never be solved. You will always crawl garbage. You can just decrease the, num the amount of garbage that you crawl, but you will always find garbage on the internet. So, yeah, to the fir first point, I want, to I want to underline that we do not want to build our own search engine, but we want to create the open web index, which will allow others to build their own search engine, which can be small, it doesn't have to be a big one, it doesn't have to be the one contender to Google or Bing, but um, the motto is we let a thousand search engines bloom so that there is a large amount of search engine and everyone can realize their own small ideas. So to build vertical search engines to a niche, to their, their, to their niche domain. Um, yeah. The second point, we do, of course, compare the URLs and hosts against the blacklist from pu public um, blacklist or spam databases, but that's not enough. You, these, you always have holes in it. You can never, it does not cover the web completely and you will still crawl malicious web pages. We just try to, yeah, prioritize web pages that we think are high quality. For example, one of the things that we looked into is we are crawling all Wikipedia pages. And Wikipedia articles some, sometimes have a link to its, um, yeah, to some reference, a link to another web page. And one criteria that we use to evaluate and assess high quality is when some um, curator, some author, includes a website um, as a reference on a, on a Wikipedia article. That is like one of the things that we looked into to, in order to um, create lists of high quality websites that we want to spend more time on crawling. It's a rather simple heuristic, but um, yeah, we are just trying out things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Reminds of something like PageRank or <laughs> things like that. Yeah, yeah. There are, for example, um, Common Crawl, which yeah. I mentioned before, they compute the harmonic centrality, which is a alternative metric to PageRank, yeah. which they say serves their purpose a bit better. Yeah. And they are sampling the CDRLs by harmonic centrality which, yeah, as I said, something like yeah. PageRank, mm -hmm. and that serves their purpose well, and I think that's really a, a, yeah, a valid thing to do. Okay. We have one <coughs> question online. So, I'll read it. How do you handle dynamic web content, and does it implement headless scraping? Yeah, there's a simple but sad answer. As um, also common crawl does, for example, and we don't handle it, we just crawl web pages that contain the text in the HTML document itself that do not okay. need headless uh, browsing. Yeah, it involves, uh, I guess it involves uh, other kind of resource. Uh, yeah, it, it, revol it involves a more advanced mm -hmm. crawling software that is also uh, slower. And also and hardware. Yeah, also that. So, yeah, we did not look into it yet. Maybe we have time for a last question. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm from the Technical University of Darmstadt. And uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I think in its spirit, it resonates a lot with Susanna's talk, our keynote speech that we listened to yesterday about the openness of software and public trust and so on. And uh, my question would be, your project is sponsored by the European Union. Uh, what would happen to it after the European Union funding ceases? Will it rely on sponsors, private sponsors? And if it, will rely, if it does rely on 
private sponsors afterwards, how do you make sure that it doesn't become, that the coalition of the sponsors doesn't become another gatekeeper in this case? This would be my first question. And the second question, I did not quite understand why do you make your own crawler if there already exists a, the storm crawler? Why do you need your own crawler? Thank you. Um, yeah, so the first question, I really can't answer it properly as these are management decisions that I luckily don't have to deal with it, you know. But um, as far as I understand, it's the idea to keep it in public hand and find a way of financing it that is sustainable, of course. However that looks like, I cannot say. To the second question, so, yeah, we do use open source projects as the storm crawler, and we do not want to substitute it, but we rather want to incorporate it into our crawling effort. So, it's not like we are writing our own, <coughs> writing our own crawler, but we do use existing software. We just want to embed it in a more comprehensive framework and more comprehensive system, I would say. Okay, thank you. I'm um, afraid we will have to stop here. And uh, we thank you again, uh, thank Michel. You. And, uh, <laughs>